It is good to be back. And uh, now the thing is, uh, we realised that after three years, we had to make some changes to keep the show fresh and to keep it exciting. So we've got ourselves a dog. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here she is. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good job. Yeah, she's fantastic. She is um, a Labradoodle, so she's part Labrador and part Poodle. Yeah, that makes her a hybrid. Yes. Um, we were going to call her Prius, but that would have been cruel, and she would have eaten a lot more than we were expecting. Yeah. Um, so, you're not going to believe her real name, OK? This is a work of genius. Her name is Top Gear Dog. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. And she's in part. Yeah. She is, she is in park most of the time. Yeah, she is. Um, the thing is, we've got the dog, we've got the frankly brilliant name, few problems. Um, firstly, we don't actually know what to do with her, now we've, um, now we've got her. Secondly, as it turns out, she's completely terrified of cars. They make her ill, <laughs> which is unfortunate. And thirdly, she's also not very fond of James May. No, she vomited on him this morning. <laughs> she did. Or blew all over him. Yeah. Disgusting. She did that. This is BBC Radio 4. Now, it's Farming Today this week. Good morning. A new report leaked to the... Beach. This is the 25-acre field where we'll be growing our first crop of Top Gear petrol. We had just one day to get it sown and immediately there was a problem. Before we could start ploughing, this lot would have to be evicted. So how do you clear sheep? Call Fred Dibner. He's dead. Not Dibner, is it? It's um, Fred Drabble. You mean Phil Drabble? He's dead as well. So what shall we do? Could use dynamite. Eventually, the job was given to Hammond right, and Gigi. Top Gear Dog. Gigi, round him up. Come on. Gigi, come on. Who didn't seem to be in the mood. Gigi, come. Gigi, come here. This is just me doing it. This is stupid. Gigi, come. Meanwhile, James and I set about the complexities of the day. No, it's really very simple. Our rented field is 25 acres big. This is the field where we're currently filming one dog and his man. TG, just round one up. TG. And we're going to plant uh, this. It's oilseed rape. TG. And then when it's harvested, we should get 15 tonnes of rapeseed oil. Yeah, and then what we're going to do is rent... Uh, it's like a distilling machine, isn't it? Yep. OK, and anyone can do that. And that will convert those 15 tonnes into 3,000 gallons of petrol. And that's enough to get my Ford GT to the shops and back. Absolutely. And it's also enough to drive a typical family car, what, 90,000 miles? No, just go the other way! That way! Hurry I'm up! Yeah, I am! That's a useless dog. He's useless. Not what? Eventually, the sheets were cleared by a proper dog, so we could get going with our tractors. And now it is time for the news. Yes, it is. And the big news this week is that it's time once again for the Top Gear survey. You see, we test the cars uh, for a week. And in that time, we can work out uh, how fast they are, how big the boot is, how comfortable they are. But we can't work out what they're like to live with every day. And that is where you come in. What okay? are you doing? What? What are you doing? Well, this is what you do in the news these days. If you've not been watching news bulletins, they'll walk about with a bit of paper. And then they talk to a camera like this and then for no obvious reason switch to another one. <laughs> like that. And then another. <laughs> like that. Uh, anyway, the point is, is that if your car is on an 03, uh, an 05, an 04, or a 54 plate, we want to hear from you, OK? Uh, so please write to us at bbc.co.uk forward slash... Top Gear. Are you, are you going to stop that now? It's what? really, really it's very irritating. irritating. No, I'm going to do the big... next bit like Channel 5. You see, Kirsty Young, she's always halfway up a staircase when she does hers. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like news pole dancing. It is. No, that's worse. That is worse. Sit is down. Just, sit, just try sitting down. I'll give it a whirl. But it might catch on. Let's see. What do you think? It's crazy. We could do the news like this. What do we think? I quite like it. Old fashioned way like this. Nice, Kendall. Here we go. Okay, here we are with the sitting down news. Let's do the news. Uh, you're starting. Yes. Um, well, the Z4M Roadster that Hammer was just driving, they've done a coupe version of that. Here it is. 
Uh, it has exactly the same engine. It does uh, 155 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in five seconds. But the really good thing is it's about 1,700 quid cheaper than the soft top yeah, one. Yeah, and how, you, you what? thought the um, soft top was hardcore. That oh, yes. hasn't got a single creature comfort in it. No, that is sort of quadruple X-rated, that thing, isn't yeah, it? It's and, nails. and incredibly ugly. <laughs> hey, I've got big motoring news this week of my own. Bought a new family car. Very excited. I bought a second-hand Land Rover Defender, big station wagon thing. It's, uh, it's a special edition. It's bright yellow. They don't make it anymore. And uh, because they don't make it anymore, they gave us a pot of, of yellow paint to go with it to touch out any little scratches. Oh, yeah. First day in it, family piled in, dog. Right, family, a new adventure in our new car. Two miles down the road, let's go for our first fill up in a petrol station in our new car. Went to turn left. I looked across and saw my wife holding the pot of paint that must have pressurised in the heat or something. Because everything apart from her eyes, everything was yellow. <laughs> the entire, the carpet, the ceiling, all dripping off the windscreen, all yellow, looked like a teenager's mirror. It was just <laughs> ruined. It just drip, drip. I had a family outing this week in my Ford GT. Took my son to the Fairford Air Show in Gloucestershire. And? It's still there. <laughs> oh, rev limiter decided that it didn't want to let the engine rev beyond 600 rpm which isn't much <laughs> not enough to actually make progress jeremy yeah did you uh did you come here in your gt today no no did you decide to leave it at home yeah, this week fact, yeah. you know perfectly well why i'm not in my gt today so you left is it at home you no it's at the mend oh oh, oh, oh. Oh! No, the thing is, OK, all the stuff that was put on in England went wrong, as we knew before, OK? Well, one of the things they supplied was the trickle charger. Put it away in the garage in October, on October the 4th. On October the 5th, it seems, the trickle charger blew up. So the battery wasn't being charged. Oh. So when I came to start, it wouldn't start. Got a new trickle charger. Six weeks later, this morning... Right, here we go. Alarm came off perfectly. All the lights came on. Push the button, start. And all that started was the rear right-hand indicator. <laughs> <laughs> We're not laughing. That's that start button. Yeah. Have you ever thought of writing, this is only the... <laughs> Of <laughs> your problems. Yes. The thing is, is I've n I think I'm right in saying I have never completed a single journey anywhere, there and back in it, ever. You're not. Which must make it the most unreliable car ever made. In fact, if you've got a more unreliable one, why don't you write to us at... Um, actually, I've got a Peugeot. Uh, BBC <laughs> Top here. <laughs> 201 uh, Wood Lane, London, W12. There's a man with a Peugeot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Subaru, who are arranging a series of track days for £250, you can go to the ProDrive test track and you can thrash around in an Impreza or one of those bigger ones whose name is Legacy. Legacy. Legacy, that's the one. Um, there's only a few conditions. Uh, you have to be 18 years or over, uh, you have to have had a full driving licence over a year, oh, and you have to be between 5 foot 2 and 6 foot 7, so that's you two out. Excellent. <laughs> Tightest, that, that frankly. Tightest. I can't uh, think of a better recommendation, actually. Than well, what? Us not being able to do it. Exactly. I'll be going. I'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now listen. If you're organising uh, a hen night, OK, obviously the most important thing that you need to remember is something to vomit into. Yes. <laughs> this is usually called a limo. Now, uh, we heard the other day, we heard the other day of a chap who's now renting out a new kind of limo. We've got a picture of it here. Yes, it's a tank. Oh, crikey. <laughs> That is a tank. It is a tank. He's put little yeah. windows in it for something for you to hold your breasts up to. Um, <laughs> as you go around. Oh, Jeremy. Well, that's what happens. I've seen it. If you look inside, it's got loads of seats, um, all of which, there you go, all wiped down. <laughs> this is quite expensive, I have to warn you. Uh, one night, £5,000. 
How much? £5,000 plus the cost of actually getting it to Newcastle. So, <laughs> you know, it is a pricey evening. It is. <laughs> now, look at this. There's a study out here. It says people with those speed camera detectors are 600% less likely to get a speeding ticket than the rest of us. In other news, it's been revealed that people with metal detectors are 600% less likely to tread on landmines. It's kind of stately, <laughs> stately obvious, isn't it? No, I mean, well, I don't get this. I mean, how can you ever get caught if you have a speed detector? Because, I mean, I've got one in our XC90. When it beeps, I don't think, oh, is my microwave meal ready somewhere? <laughs> if there's a beep, there's a camera. It's yeah. simple. No, no, the reason is... I've worked it out, is that they don't know the location of those mobile ones that they put in vans or on sticks, you know, that they hide... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But then there's a way around that, because mm. you should always, you know, flash and do the thumbs down. Ah, yeah. well, you say that, but did you read about that it was a lorry driver, I think it was? Yes. That he was right. flashing people coming the other way because there was a speed camera, and they tried to prosecute him for doing that, for warning people about an upcoming... Speed well, that's just basically being prosecuted for being kind for being a human being. But I really like that, that sense of camaraderie you get when you're on the road and people you don't know share that stuff about speed cameras with you. I was driving along a bit back and there was one hidden in the, in the you know, farmer's turning around place, which I couldn't see. And there was a bloke on a bike coming the other way and he was so determined that I wouldn't get caught for speeding that he actually came onto my side of the road and rode towards me going like that. <laughs> was he determined or, you know, you can be a bit... Dopey. <laughs> Had he tried, like, everything else? I have to admit, I had no idea what he was on about. Exactly. <laughs> Did you get a ticket? Yeah, it didn't really occur to me until the bloke was writing the ticket. <laughs> <I> thought, <laughs> Lexus, OK, uh, launched a new hybrid. I've uh, got a photograph of it here. It's called the uh, GS something or other, and it's got a V6 engine and an electric motor, OK? And they say it'll do 35.8 miles to the gallon. <laughs> but it doesn't. No, no, it won't. <laughs> Did you see um, Cameron Diaz last week when she said, my Toyota Prius does 52 miles to the gallon in the city? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. No, absolutely not. In fact, when they said, Cameron, it does 52 miles to the gallon, they were acting. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, if she can do 52 miles to the gallon in that car, I'll let her sleep with me. <laughs> And that's not the sound of Cameron Diaz reaching for a car key. <laughs> hey, listen. You know those dot matrix signs that you see on the M25? OK, the overhead gantries yeah. with messages saying congestion ahead, and there never is. No, there isn't. Do you know why? Well, because there's never been any correlation between a dot matrix display and the truth. That's true. That in fact, true. I've got a mate with a microwave oven with a dot matrix on, and when you cook something in it, it goes ping, and then it says, enjoy your meal. Which is display. extremely unlikely if it's come out of a microwave. Exactly. Be really well, particularly unlikely when I was drying my pants in them. The other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, said, enjoy your meal. Yes. In a mate's microwave? Well, that means you had no pants on in your mate's kitchen! No! no. no. Oh. Oh. Your mate. What were you doing? No, Why that's... your mate going down I to wash them. his coffee in the morning and you're there with no pants on and everything? I had my Tell spare Stop talking. pants Stop on. Talking. Stop talking. Stop talking again. again. He doesn't have a tumble dryer. For your sake, and to, for hours. I have to get back to it, OK? Because I've done some more checking on this. OK, shall I tell you the reason why they do the dot matrix lying on the M25? It's because if they put congestion ahead, it means they can put the low speed limit up. And that triggers the speed cameras. They turns them on. What, at the lower limit? Yeah, because if, if the motorway's clear and empty, it's a 70 mile an hour limit, the cameras aren't on. If they say there's congestion, lower the speed limit to 50, the cameras come on at 50. Seriously, that is absolutely not a word of a so lie. So you're driving a completely empty motorway. Oh, sorry, we made a mistake, but the cameras are on getting you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's Dick Turpinism. It yeah. is Dick Turpinism, <laughs> but the fact is, if you went past a speed camera, you're still going to get done. I have found what I consider to be pretty close to the perfect car. You know, last year I went to the south of France, drove the Audi RS4. Mm -hmm. Fantastic thing, OK? Well, they've now brought out this version of it, OK? An RS4 Cabriolet. Now, that's about as good as it's going to get. I think that radiator grill's pretty gopping, though. Yeah, listen, but Uma Thurman's got big hands. You're not going to say, get out of my house, are you? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> she's got big hands. I don't like girls with big hands. <laughs> Why don't you like girls with big hands? Well, it just looks wrong, doesn't it? You get a woman who says, hi, James, I'm Uma, you know, with a great big hand. <laughs> 
that's just wrong. It's all big. Get back. To, listen, this has got 414 brake horsepower, four-wheel drive, goes like the clappers, sounds absolutely wonderful. Brilliant car, that. You Brilliant. said, did you not, that the only person who ever looked good in the back of a four-seat convertible was Adolf Hitler. Yes. You did say that. You did. I did say that, but it doesn't matter because the front seats in an RS4 are so kind of big and buckety, you can't get anyone in the back anyway. Oh, brilliant. So you're saying the best thing about your four-seater cabriolet is you can only fit two people in it? Yes. God, you do talk some rubbish sometimes, mate. <laughs> you really do. 60 grand as well, good value. Um, now, have a look at this. This is uh, an electronic device. It's called the Quick Start. It costs £9.99. Um, you stick it in your cigarette lighter when you're driving in France. And when you turn the car on in the morning, its little electronic voice reminds you to drive on the right. That might be useful if you're Reasonable. a bit thick. Sounds like a good idea. Actually, it's a complete waste of £9.99. When you get up in the morning, all your luggage has been stolen from the boot and your car's just a burnt-out shell, you'll know you're in France anyway, so why do you... <laughs> It's a fair point. That uh, is a fair point. Now, the news, and we start with the recent rise in petrol prices. Yes, we do. Uh, I want to start, if I may, by talking about organic peace crisps. Hey. You know the organic ones? Yeah? They're about 20p a pack more than proper crisps, OK? The only difference is, is they've been fertilised with the excrement, human excrement, of a Mexican farmer, OK? <laughs> Right. No, they, no, that's true, right? And Fine. nobody minds paying the 20p a pack more. But if petrol goes up 1p, everyone runs around waving their arms in the air. And the thing is this, OK, if you buy those crisps, the 20p goes to the Mexican sewage industry. If you buy petrol, the, the money goes to the government who spend it letting out foreign prisoners so they can stab people. <laughs> You know how dogs like to stick their head out the window and uh, uh, in the car? Yeah. Well, we've been sent these for Top Gear Dog in case we ever take her in a convertible car. Yeah. And so she doesn't get anything in her eyes. They're the latest thing. They're called doggles. You see, they, <laughs> the dog puts them on and... and there you go. They're not doggles. They're normal goggles with a G crossed out and a D written No, there. no, no. They're no. goggles. They're not because they've got a special bit there, you see. So you can put them on and then she hooks that bit around a collar. Then she can take it off and then whenever she wants to, she can just put them on like that and... and... How's she going to put them back on again? <laughs> well, <laughs> they'll have to invent new dog thumbs that they <laughs> strap onto their paws and then they can... Let's see what she looks like. Come on, let's Top just gear, put them on, on. see if they fit. Um, <clears throat> don't know how these... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, didn't you recently call bus drivers Nazis? No. No, you did, you did. You rec you... I didn't. You did. I didn't. I said that they were little Hitlers and murderers. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, fact is, they're quite cross, and more specifically, their union leader is furious with you personally. And he's gone on record as saying that you should spend a week working as a bus driver under their working conditions for their pay. Yeah. Well, think about it. What's he done there? What he's saying is that bus drivers' working conditions and pay are dreadful. And he's their union leader. Well, who's responsible for that? <laughs> Him! Yeah. Basically, he ran to one end of the pitch, kicked it to the back of the net and went, yeah, I recognise that goalie, it's mine. I've yeah. got it, I've got it. <laughs> what an idiot. He is. But you've driven a bus, haven't you? Yes, lots, lots How of bus drivers. How is it? Easiest thing I've ever done. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. It's, it's easier cool. sitting here? Yeah. It's easier, actually, because you're not being filmed. So you can have a joint. No, sorry. <laughs> right. Is, um... <laughs> no, it is very easy. There you are, you see. No need to be a murderer. Hmm. What? Well, you were there, weren't you? What? Oh, what? Where? Oh, yeah, the what? big party. Beckham. Oh, the Beckhams. Oh, that one. I did. I went. <laughs> best bit, I gotta tell you, right, the best bit 
was we got a car to take us with the driver and my wife got into it to go home at about half past three in the morning, got halfway home, it's a long, an hour and a half, turned to tell me something and realised she'd left me behind. <laughs> Do the news. Yes, and we begin with good news, which is that MG is back, sort of. What's actually happened is that the Chinese company that has bought the rights to the MG Rover name has said that it will reopen the Long Bridge factory and that next year it will start making the MG TF again. Well, hold on a minute. Aren't they going to make it in China, then take it to pieces, then ship it over here and then assemble it in Birmingham so they can say it's British? Isn't that the idea? <laughs> yes, that's as we understand it. But if you think about this, the Chinese, they say they're going to be investing £10 million in Long Bridge, yeah? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of money if you're going to spend it on sweets. But I've done some research on this. Seriously, Mercedes spend £10 million on research alone every single day. So where's that going to go? Well, is that, no, and they end up with cars that you might want to buy. Now, I can't think of anyone I've ever met who thinks, yes, my life would be complete if I could buy an 11-year-old sports car that's made in China and then nailed together by a bunch of blokes in Birmingham. <laughs> I think you're forgetting. Is the, is the great affection that is felt all over the world for the traditional British sports car. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone see the Monte Carlo Grand Prix at the weekend? See it? Yeah. Really? Actually, no. No, I didn't think you would have done that. I didn't watch it as well. No, they never watched Formula One, OK? Now, here's the thing. Michael Schumacher is on his hot lap, OK, qualifying lap, yeah? And then he kind of stops and blocks the road and everyone says, oh, that was cheating because he was going to be on pole position. Now, even if, even if it was cheating, and I'm not sure that it was, how brilliant is that? You're, you're driving 120 miles through Monte Carlo, like this, and then you think, so I know what I'll do. If I just stop here, I'll block the traffic, so I'll pretend to have an accident and it won't really be one, and there I am on pole! I, honestly, he's a genius, that man. <laughs> It's not exactly, um, sporting, is it? That's the trouble with Formula One. Everyone's obsessed about sporting behaviour. You see in the Nürburgring, do you see after qualifying there? There's, what's his name, the other Renault driver, Fissy Keller. Fissy Keller charging down the pit lane to go and plant one on Villeneuve. And they go, oh, that's not very sporty. It is! He's a young Mediterranean racing driver and he wants to plant a big on a stupid, <laughs> short-sighted, baggy-trousered Canadian. And he should have got points for it. He should have got extra points for that. So you're saying drivers should just get, like, random points? Yes! And who's going to give them these points? Me! Oh, there's a surprise. <laughs> Let me guess, you're going to sit in like a big box, high up, overlooking the circuit, maybe, maybe with a crown made of leaves and a toga. <laughs> and then at the end, you can decide whether they win or they lose. Like, really bad. I like the leaves. Yeah, I thought I you might. thought of the leaves. <laughs> Only that. I would have given Schumacher a hundred for being dick dastardly. There we are. Right. Can I move on? Only at your no, age, I'm worried I've about I've got another stress. idea. You know people in Sheffield nightclubs that are always egging their mates on to have a fight? Well, yes. Every <laughs> one of the pit garages should have one of those. Hey, you'll see that Alonso, he was looking at your pit board. You know, <laughs> he's starting he's fights. He spilt your practice like, what are you going to do? You can't do nothing. You've <laughs> <laughs> be brilliant. So listen, Bernie, if you're watching, you've got my number. Give me a call and some leaves. I'm your man. Hey, you know the police have got no way of testing drivers for drugs. Now, you might think, well, so, it's not a very big problem. There's only so many Pete Doherty's driving around. Well, <laughs> a study has shown this week that at any one time, 20% of young drivers on the road are under the influence of drugs. 20%? One Blimey. in five. It's a staggering statistic. There's one. How did you, <laughs> How did you get here today? <laughs> what? You flew. Yeah. The Cylons brought in. <laughs> Peugeot 306 spaceship. <laughs> The thing is, as a result of this problem, the police have had to introduce special tests for drugs. What tests? I don't know, it didn't say. I haven't looked at I mean, I'm imagining it's things like they, you know, wander up, tap on the window and say, would sir like a Jaffa cake? Feeling peckish? <laughs> well, it works for cannabis. It's not going to work for cocaine, though, is it? No, That's right. going to have to be... Why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Well, I will, actually, since you mention it. <laughs> That's true. 1960, that would get They'd have to vary it. Ecstasy would be easy. Cos I just say, roll down the window, now, nah, sir, do you love me? Do you want a big hug? Come on, <laughs> you're Do you love me? Hey, private number plates. We don't really like them very no, much, do we? Apart from when, the only time they're really vaguely acceptable is when they make a rude word. 
Yeah. So, well, the DVLA has been sifting through them. Every now and again, they, they do this, don't they? They have a cull of yeah. ones that they think might be rude. So there's a, another batch that aren't allowed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you can't now have A55 HOL. <laughs> That's a bottom thing. Yeah, you can't have that. Um, you can't have... Oh, yeah, it's a shame. You can't have that. <laughs> That's a bottom thing. These have all really been banned. But um, there, was, uh, there were a few surprising ones. I couldn't get this at first, but you can't have that. And it took a bit of time, but I've worked it out. Hamas. Hamas. Yes. yes. Hamas. That's a pity I'd like to have had that put it on a Toyota pickup truck. Oh, yeah. Because you could have parked outside the Palace of Westminster, nobody would have given you a ticket. No. <laughs> You'd have left there like an alarm clock on the passenger yeah. seat. Just, <laughs> just some big pipes on top yes, of it. Just delivering, <laughs> delivering pipes today. Yeah, we get loads of uh, letters on this show, very angry ones from people who say that we don't do enough um, affordable cars, you know, family cars. One particularly angry caller last week rang the BBC duty log saying we were a disgrace. Well, Mr Needham, check this out. That is the new Vauxhall Corsa. And uh, moving on now. Um... <laughs> oh, now, there are some new cars that have been coming out in recent weeks. Uh, there's this new Honda Civic Type R. Got a photograph there. Now, you look at that, you know that's going to be a great car to drive. You do. Mm -hmm. You just know by looking at it, OK? There's a new Land Rover Freelander. Again, look at that, you know it's all going to be fine. New uh, Chrysler, it's called the Sebring. There it is. You look at that, you know it'll be rubbish. It will be, won't it? <laughs> you, you know they're in trouble. They said, I was reading the details, they said there's one page thing on that car, one page to get all the things about that car. Halfway down, they were talking about how the cup holders will chill your drink as you're driving along, and you know you're in trouble when they're talking about that. That is desperation. <laughs> There's a new truck, okay, coming from America. Here it is. It'll be on sale in Britain uh, in July. It's called the Dodge Calibre. Right-hand drive. Uh, do you want to know how much that is? 11,500 quid. Is that all? Huh? Yeah, 11,500 quid. That is what? Six times less than a Range Rover. Yes. How have they done that? Well, it's six times smaller than a Range Rover. Is it? Yeah, I'm not joking. It is actually the size of a Golf. It's a 1.8 two-wheel drive family hatchback designed to look like that. They're actually in trouble in America because they've been advertising and they've dubbed the V8 soundtrack over the ad. <laughs> to make it look bigger. Yeah, they've just got, look at this, and it's tiny. It's like me, that car. Mm, it is because people think it's further away than it really is. <laughs> I get it all the time. People come up to shake my hand and they stick the finger in my eye. They're like, oh, I thought you were over there. Yeah. And you're here. No, that's absolutely right, because I'm often talking to someone about what a cock he is, thinking he's right over <laughs> the other side of the room. <laughs> and I'm here. And then actually he turns out to be standing right next to me. The things I hear like that. That is the world's most pointless car. Good. Well, we sorted that. The end. On now to one of the coolest cars of the year. What? It is a Ford People Carrier. There it is, look. Look at that. Now, you know last week, Richard, you banged your head while you were driving my Mercedes yes. cottage. Has this... No, 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 seriously, bear with me. For one thing, it's absolutely... I mean, it's a seven-seater MPV, but look, it's really cool looking. That is a great car. He's absolutely right. I've driven it and I'd have it, and I'm a bachelor. Yeah, it drives really, really well, and... <laughs> What I mean is, I like it as a car. I don't have to think, yes, the seats swivel, I can get a lot of brightly coloured mother care rubbish. No, no, in the you back. can just have your little brush for cleaning your air vents in there, James. That's That's right. Right. James May on parenting, <laughs> brightly coloured mother Me care. And my brush. Anyway, thing is, you can get that two and a half litre five cylinder engine from the, the Fast Focus ST, so mm. it sounds brilliant, it's fast, it handles well. It's, it's a cool car. It's good. What you're saying then is, if your condom bursts, it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you that's your answer. Oh, God. Now, listen, you know eBay, OK? If you're planning on selling a, a car on eBay, a couple of tips. Try to get as much information in, uh, about the car without being boring, OK? So, service history, mileage, OK? And get a nice photograph. Don't just use one that you've got lying around, especially if you've taken it just after the car had been put in a ditch, like this chap. What? <laughs> 
that's not that was a genuine, <laughs> and as a result of that, the winning bid was £139. It's in a ditch! Yeah. He said that was the only picture he had of it. <laughs> Hey, now, talking of getting in touch, we had a number of people after last week's show got in touch to complain. They did. We had, well, I said something about a Muslim, OK? Two complaints. You remember Jesus came last week? I he talked did. to him. <laughs> Three complaints. We were slightly rude about caravans. Yeah, we sort of set one on fire a bit. 150 complaints. <laughs> Seriously. 150, and lots of people are now demanding an apology. They are. So, um, we really are sorry, and we promise that we will, all three of us, never ever go caravanning again. No, 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 no. I'm sorry we didn't burn more caravans. You're right, so am I. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, now, there was a great one in the papers this week. I haven't seen that. Cut it out, all right? I brought it along. That, a wristband, OK, which you wear and it stops you falling asleep at the wheel. How? Well, if you don't move your wrist for 15 seconds, it buzzes. So you've got to keep your wrist. <laughs> I was going to say, you'd have to remember to take it off before you went to bed, but maybe you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to explain all this to my nine-year-old boy. <laughs> who's ten, I've just remembered. <laughs> maybe I won't have to explain it to him after all now. Now, look at this. There's a bloke stole a Mercedes McLaren SLR, mm -hmm. which is one of the fastest cars in the world. Yes. We're agreed. It's right at the top of our board. Um, but it was fitted with one of those tracker devices, so the police could trace it. They caught him after 40 minutes. Do you know how far he'd gone in that time? 12 miles. <laughs> what was he doing? He's the that's, least that's, ambitious thief in the world. It's an average speed of 18 miles per hour. <laughs> Why did he nick it? I don't know, but I would like to appeal to him if he's been let out by the uh, Home Secretary, which he almost certainly has been. <laughs> If you'd like to uh, steal a motor vehicle and travel around the place at 80 miles an hour, could you please nick my Honda 90? <laughs> Thanks. Hey, listen, my mother, OK? You know, I said in the last series I'd buy her a Honda Civic. You did? She's had a test drive in one, and she doesn't like it. Why not? Because she says the gearbox is wrong. What, you mean it's, like, it's not very well spoken? No, she says, that, she says that every time it changes gear, you go through the windscreen. And do you know what, James, you reviewed this car a couple of weeks ago. Mm. I'm surprised you never mentioned that, uh, that drawback to it's it. It's quite a big one, Matt. Well, I didn't really think anybody would be very interested in that. What, that you go through the windscreen every time it changes gear? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit sort of consumer-oriented. <laughs> anyway, I am now left with a big problem, which is what on earth to buy her? Have you seen this? The Noble M15, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, it could be. Yeah, tell 70, me more. £75,000. Uh, three litre twin turbo V6 engine, 185 miles an hour. British built, of course, 0 to 60 in under four seconds in that. She'd go through the back window if you put it. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Tempting, tempting, I must say. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the answer. Ordinarily, I would not plug any show that these two are appearing in, OK? But James has recently signed up to host a programme on Sky 32, OK? <laughs> called When Sharks Attack, OK? Ah, uh, yeah. Now, this is worth watching because I've managed to procure a still from the production of James. And here it is. <laughs> I... <laughs> this is a show you cannot miss. Is that legal in this country? <laughs> 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 If it's you... the Barbie doll thing. Here you go, the Ken and Barbie crotch. There's no, nothing happening. No, that, that... <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. Oh, hang on. I haven't done anything no, silly lately. There was a picture in the paper last week, uh, which I've got on your Grail programme. The publicity shot, here it is. How small was that horse? <laughs> it would have been a very big family's if you got a My Little Pony. <laughs> And I thought, that's what horses look like when I get on them, so God knows what that was. Anyway, listen, that is the end of the news.